And here's the list of five guys. Jalen Hurts, J.K. Dobbins, D.J. Moore, Darnell Mooney, and Dallas Goddard. So, Heath, let's start with the Eagles guys here because Jalen Hurts is a guy that you and I are both very excited about. Top five quarterback in both of our rankings. Uh, Dave's a little bit lower, but I was excited about him as well as you heard with the previous segment that he should be is one of the top, top talked about breakout candidates of quarterback. But we said earlier this offseason, and I know you were the first one to say it, that he could be the number one quarterback in fantasy. Why? Because he's already got the rushing ability, and that's a big part of it. It really lowers the bar for what you have to do as a passer to be great if you can run for 800 yards in a season, and he could absolutely do that this year. Also, he just added A.J. Brown. We saw what type of impact that made when Kyler Murray added DeAndre Hopkins, when Josh Allen added Stephon Diggs. I'm not sure Hurts will make the same leap those guys do, but it's absolutely possible. Now we're seeing in the preseason and training camp, he's made some improvements as a passer as well. It's a lot easier to make good passes when you have guys wide open. He's going to have a lot more guys open this year. Dave, the big question, I think, not necessarily about what his ability is, is what this offense will look like. And, you know, knowing that they added A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith in his second year, and now Dallas Goddard is free of Zach Ertz. They have, you know, three premier pass catchers, potentially, certainly based on pedigree. Um, Can they or will they throw the ball enough by comparison to where they were a year ago at the end of the season, which helped their playoff push, where they were such a run-heavy team. I think they want to, Jamie. I don't think you acquire A.J. Brown and then not improve the run game and then say, no, nah, we're going to keep running. I think they want to go back to trying to be, at minimum, a balanced offense. But at maximum, maybe a team that throws the ball 57 58% of the time. And I think that that would be great for Jalen Hurts. And I think he's earning that trust all throughout training camp. Certainly, he's he's starting to get more trust from me, not that he cares, but as a fantasy manager, I'm watching him make these amazing throws in preseason games. I'm reading the same reports that you are. The people who are watching him every day, they continue to be impressed with him. I'm looking forward to seeing him. I'm going to a couple of Eagles practices next week. I can't wait, and I'm pretty excited about what his potential is because if he throws for, let's just, let's, let's lowball him a little bit. 3,800 passing yards, 28 total touchdowns, 600 rush yards. That's about 380 raw fantasy points. That's before you start thinking about dividing that up over 17 games. But that comes out to still 23, 24 fantasy points per game. That could be the floor. It's going to be fun to see how he does. And we love these running quarterbacks. And one of his top targets is another breakout candidate for you in Dallas Goddard. And so we know there's the the pecking order at tight end. There's the top three guys that are going to go. Well, top two guys are going to be right. certainly Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews. Kyle Pitts kind of falls into the third category by himself or the third spot by himself. Then Waller and Kittle get lumped together a little bit. And then there's that next group of Schultz, Goddard, and Hawkins. I think most people are taking Schultz at the top of that list. But should Goddard be closer to Schultz? closer to Hawkinson, or maybe should he be ahead of those guys and in the conversation with the top five? Yeah, I think really, and I've almost come to the point where I want to separate Waller and Kittle out and put Kittle, Schultz, and Goddard all in kind of the same group, and I do think Goddard could be better than both of those guys. We saw him make a leap when Zach Ertz got traded away last year. The targets, the production, he averaged 10.9 yards per target, which is elite for a wide receiver, much less a tight end. He just didn't score touchdowns, so he didn't score that many fantasy points. That's the way that works. But he's been a very good touchdown scorer in the past. I don't think you have to worry about that. I also don't think you have to worry that much about A.J. Brown. I believe the pass volume will be raised enough, and his bucket of tight end targets will be secure enough that his targets don't go down with A.J. Brown there. It just might be that he's more open now. And he's, based on where we look, you know, Kelsey round one, Andrews round two, round three, Pitts round three, round four, Waller round four, round five, same thing with Kittle. He's sometimes in round eight, and it's right. just a uh, great value for a tight end that does have top five upside. Let's talk about the running back that you have here in J.K. Dobbins, and I think people look at this and say, breakout, is he broken because of what's happening with him? Coming back from the ACL tear, hasn't practiced fully yet, you know, has missed some time once again after coming back, being initially off the, off the pup list. Can he have that season that we were hoping for a year ago before he suffered this knee injury? Yeah, and what we saw in his rookie year was it was like the last six games where he was just an absolute monster. He ended up averaging six yards per carry for the whole season, scored nine touchdowns on 134 carries. That type of elite efficiency, I don't think we will necessarily see for 17 games, but we might see it for 12 or 13 games. And you won't care if he started off slow if he's producing like a top 12 back in the second half of the season. He is an elite talent at running back. Playing with Lamar Jackson is going to guarantee elite efficiency for him, and I expect more more catches this year than what we've seen from Ravens running backs in the past. That's certainly a big part of this if he's going to take that step forward. And so, Dave, you see uh, Heath and Sportsline, we're all in kind of a similar range here, but I think it really matters when you start to look at the running backs that J.K. Dobbins is around. And we typically tend to see, 
him in the range of Montgomery, Hall, Elliott, and in PPR at least, Travis Etienne. Does J.K. Dobbins have the ability to be better than those guys? I think he does. He's got to play 17 games, and he's got to get a steady dose of work in order to do it, and that's something that we haven't necessarily seen from him. When he had the great end to 2020, he was getting a lot of touchdowns. He was still splitting the running back reps in Baltimore, and Lamar Jackson was taking a lot of the rushing reps overall. And I think Lamar's still going to do that. I don't think, you know, all this talk about Lamar being a better passer and putting on weight, I don't think that means that he's not going to run. I think he's going to run a lot. I just don't know who that second running back is going to be in Baltimore. I think they're trying to figure it out. And they might get to a point, and Dobbins has to prove it, where they just go, look, Dobbins is better because it's Mike Davis, it's Tyler Beatty. They are already cut Corey Clement. I, I, I think that they are going to eventually have to land on Dobbins and say, okay, he's got to be our guy. We've got to lean on him. His knee, I hope, is okay. And they just put him out there. And that's that's why I've got him as like a round four pick in PPR. And there are so many other running backs that have had their profile diminished in the last month that Dobbins is now ahead of before he was behind them all. But I'm nervous about Elijah Mitchell. I'm nervous about Cam Akers. Definitely nervous about Antonio Gibson. Those are just three names. There's more. Dobbins is ahead of them for me right now.